Here is a more interesting and more challenging example of how we work with linear expansion. Now here we have a steel rod that has a diameter of four centimeters exactly. And here we have an aluminum plate that has a hole drilled within the plate with a diameter exactly of 3.99 centimeters. And you can see that the steel bar, the steel rod, will not fit into that hole. Let's say that they start at 20 degrees centigrade. And let's say that you now heat both of them up so they will both expand. The question is how much do you have to heat both of them up to what temperature so that the steel rod will fit inside the hole of the aluminum plate. And the reason why that will happen is because the coefficient of expansion for steel is equal to 11 times 10 to the minus 6 per centigrade degree and the coefficient of aluminum, the coefficient of linear expansion for aluminum is equal to 24 times 10 to the minus 6 per centigrade degree. So you can see that the aluminum will expand more than the steel, that means the hole will get bigger faster than for steel as they're being heated up to the same amount, the same temperature, and eventually the steel rod will fit in there. Then when you let that cool down again, of course the, the aluminum will then shrink more than the steel and will make a very, very tight fitting around the rod and the rod will not go anywhere after that. That's called heat fitting that's still used in the industry. So how high does the temperature need to be for both metals so that the rod will actually fit in the hole of the aluminum plate. And by the way, something you may not realize is that yes, when you heat up a plate that has a hole drilled in it, the hole will not get smaller with increasing temperature, the hole will actually get bigger with increasing temperature and we'll see later on in another video why that is so. But now, we're trying to figure out the final temperature. So, how do we figure that out? Well, you see that the aluminum has to expand more than the steel. How much more? Of course, the difference between the two. And so what you can say then is that the change of the aluminum in the length, the change in the length or diameter of the aluminum is equal to the change of the steel. So let me put aluminum here. The change in the length of the steel plus 0 0.01 centimeters. That makes sense, right? Because the steel has to expand less than the aluminum, so the aluminum has to expand as much as the steel plus this so that the steel can fit. All right, that seems to make sense. Now, let's plug in the equations. That means the coefficient of linear expansion for aluminum times the original length of the aluminum times the change in the temperature for the aluminum is equal to the linear coefficient for steel times the initial length of the steel times the change of the temperature for the steel plus 0 0.01 centimeters. And if I keep everything in terms of centimeters, I'm good with the units. Now notice that the change in the temperature for both is going to be exactly the same. So we can solve this equation for the change in the temperature by first moving everything over to one side. So we could say that the change or the coefficient of linear expansion of aluminum times the orig original length of the aluminum times delta T minus, when we move this across, the coefficient for steel times the original length for steel times delta T is equal to 0 0.01 centimeters. So now you can see that I can factor out a delta T and then divide everything by what's left. So let's do that here. So I have delta T times what's left, which is the coefficient for aluminum times the original length for aluminum minus the coefficient of steel times the original length for steel. So I put aluminum here, steel there. I know I'm in your way, so let me get out of the way here so you can see that. And that then equals what we have on the right side, which is 0 0.01 centimeters. All right. Last thing we need to do is divide both sides by this. So we can say that the change in the temperature is equal to 0 0.01 centimeters divided by the coefficient for aluminum times the original length minus the coefficient of steel times the original length. Now, you can probably be okay by saying that the, the original length for both is approximately the same. You can see that there's a very small difference between them, but just to kind of keep it exact, we'll go ahead and use the, the proper numbers. All right, so this is equal to 0 0.01 centimeters divided by the coefficient of aluminum, which is 24 times 10 to the minus 6 per centigrade degree times L sub naught for aluminum, and for aluminum it was 3.99 centimeters, so 3.99 centimeters. And let me get out of your way so you can see that, All right? So we just plugged in what these two are equal to. Now we subtract from that. For steel is 11 times 10 to the minus 6 per centigrade degree times 
and that would be the exact diameter for steel, which would be 4.00 centimeters. All right. So this should give us the change in the temperature. And here's our calculator. So let's first work out the denominator. So I have 24E6 minus times 3.99 minus 11E to the 6 minus times 4 equals, take the inverse of that, and then multiply the times 0 0.01 equals, and I get 193 degrees centigrade, or centigrade degrees, so 193 centigrade degrees. So, if the increase has to be 193 centigrade degrees, the T final then must be this plus the T initial, so let's write that down here, so we can say that T final is equal to T initial plus the change in the temperature, the initial temperature was 20 degrees centigrade, plus a delta of 193 centigrade degrees, 193 centigrade degrees, and so it's equal to 213 degrees centigrade for the final temperature. You get up to 213 degrees centigrade, then the steel rod will fit right in the hole, and then you allow it to cool down, and the aluminum will then clasp itself around the steel rod, and you won't be able to move that rod anywhere. You probably want to heat it up a little bit more than that, so it fits. Because if you cut it that close, you might have a little trouble getting the rod into the hole. Anyway, that's a nice little example of how we work with linear expansion.